Hello everyone and thanks again for joining us now for this Saturday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. On the breakup map, <clears throat> no watches, warning or, warnings or advisories out for any of the rivers. In fact, the Cuscombe River now mostly open the entire stretch of the way there and uh, also mostly open here on the upper part of the Yukon now with uh, mostly open to some open all the way down past Ruby, but uh, past Ruby right there, but not quite to Galena. Uh, and that's uh, mostly ice the remainder of the way on out. And Northern River is uh, still frozen up pretty good. And for the uh, satellite imagery today, low pressure here right along the southwest coast and a lot of clouds and showers along with rain in across the southwest interior. And another batch here bringing showers in over south central Alaska, trying to spread up into the central interior. Could be some isolated showers up here, but really nothing significant. Uh, a little more sun up here in some areas, but uh, temperatures still struggling to reach 60 degrees uh, in any location up in the uh, eastern interior. Band of clouds up there, North Slope Arctic Coast brought areas of uh, rain and snow along pretty good stretch of the coastline there. About the entire stretch of the coastline had some precipitation uh, today back down in toward Cape Lisburn. They picked about a third of an inch of rain in the last 24 hours, uh, water equivalent. Some of that could fall in the snow. And that uh, comes down through the Bering Strait, catches uh, the west side of St. Lawrence Island there, drier to the east, and then kind of wraps back in close to the Pribilofs and then back into the southwest coast. Out to the west, uh, clouds covering all of the Bering Sea here, even though a ridge of high pressure extends from the Russian Far East all the way down uh, <clears throat> into the central and eastern Aleutians, high pressure at the surface, and to a certain extent aloft. That ahead of the next system, as you can see, not all that strong. But you can see a narrow band coming in, the uh, occluded front with that next system, starting to bring the winds up a little bit out to the west there, but really not much in the way of rain has reached uh, the far western Aleutians. Over the southeast coast, we have a warm front extending along this uh, batch of moisture as it streams north and then northeast right into the central pan. There's some light rain there, uh, dry to the south, isolated showers to the north, and then uh, some moisture moving on to the North Gulf Coast today. On the chart, there's that uh, moisture with the warm front there affecting the central panhandle with clouds and uh, otherwise high pressure up along the North Gulf Coast at the surface. And not too bad, uh, some isolated showers, mostly Kenai Peninsula, up over the mountainous train, the Copper River Basin. Come a little more widespread here, western Cook Inlet and uh, western Susitna Valley back to the west. Uh, rainfall amounts uh, generally running anywhere from, well, at Marshall, they picked up about a third of an inch of rain, while Teller also had a third of an inch, or no, Teller had about half an inch of rain, while uh, Selawick up in the northwest here, they picked up two tenths of an inch of rain. And then over at uh, Saguan there, with this area moisture crossing the north slope, water equivalent precipitation there, about three-tenths of an inch. So uh, pretty good rainfall here occurring uh, over the last 24 hours over much of uh, the central and western interior as well as the north slope with lighter amounts here to the east and southeast. And rain possibly making its way into the western Aleutians this afternoon. And tonight that'll be a little more widespread, but won't make it too much past Amchitka Island with uh, winds not, maybe small craft advisory level winds, and that's about it. Otherwise, high pressure, light winds, isolated showers, maybe some fog, drizzle, that type of uh, condition there for the central Aleutians. Fox Islands, uh, Alaska Peninsula scattered showers become an area of rain along the southwest coast later tonight mixed with snow. St. Lawrence Island into the uh, Bering Strait, and you can see this area of snow now pulling off to the west. Just some flurries left over along the Arctic coast, isolated showers, uh, maybe the northern Koyukuk Valley, central western Brooks Range, dry through the central interior and variably cloudy with no wind at all. And that condition also will consist over the Copper River Basin, still again some isolated showers, diminishing showers south central Alaska, but lingering. Uh, southern Kenai Peninsula and along the Alaska Range and the southeast coast here drying out that area of moisture lifting northward there and beginning to spread back to the northwest as this system pulls northward and develops. 996 millibar low there. Uh, high pressure 
over the southeast part of the, of the uh, panhandle <coughs> will mostly kind of just weaken. Still have some ridging here over the southern southeast coast tomorrow. Uh, that's a misplaced shower symbol there. That should be gone. Just be mostly cloudy or maybe even partly sunny if you're lucky there. Otherwise, really it looks like the northern two-thirds will be wet with the heaviest rain up here in the north, Yakutat and the north Gulf Coast. As that low pressure moves northward, the moisture will pull north with it and then begin to spread westward across Prince William Sound. Could possibly uh, reach uh, past Alieska and Girdwood and possibly get to the Chugach Mountains by the afternoon hours. Otherwise, Southern Cook Inlet could see some sunshine, scattered showers, Kodiak Island, showers here in the western interior, and still areas of rain ex will exist with that uh, very slow, low pressure area drifting across Norton Sound. Could see some areas of rain <clears throat> from the uh, Seward Peninsula here right into mostly the Yukon Delta with the Cuscombe Delta just seeing showers, scattered showers, Alaska Peninsula mostly cloudy, could be partly sunny for an Alaska Dutch Harbor and Nikolsky, and not too bad for the central Aleutians, uh, mostly dry, light winds starting to turn southeast, especially for ADAC, but I think the rain band will stay off to your west through tomorrow, stay wet out over the uh, western Aleutians, again, winds no problem at all out there, and no wind under this ridge axis here from the northwest bearing down across uh, the eastern Aleutians in this area. North slope looking pretty good, some partly sunny skies in store, maybe even along the Arctic coast as well. Still have some lingering rain and snow showers over there toward the east, toward Kaktovik, Barter Island, but again, that's going to be pretty hit and miss and nothing significant at all. And it'll stay mostly dry over the eastern interior from uh, roughly 40 mile country up upper Tanana Valley into the Yukon Flats. And then for Monday, a little different story here. We have this low pressure area now comes northward. Looks like some rain will develop here from the Alaska Range up across the upper Tanana Valley, possibly far north of Eagle. So uh, better chance for some precipitation in this area of the state for Monday. And that'll extend back to the west, uh, possibly to the mid Tanana Valley, then cut off scattered showers back to the west along this trough, isolated scattered showers. Same thing with this trough here over the southwest, isolated scattered showers, mostly cloudy skies. Could be some clearing in here as well, and not quite as cool. With uh, Kodiak Island, uh, with the way this wind flow is, looks like it could be a mostly sunny day up into southern Cook Inlet. And then some leftover moisture will keep some periods of light rain going along the eastern north Gulf Coast, mostly from about Cordova, eastward to Yakutat with just isolated showers, western Prince William Sound in toward the uh, Talkeetna, maybe the Chugach Mountains. Mostly sunny, southern southeast coast and a little bit warmer with uh, the Bering Sea looking pretty calm out there with uh, areas of low clouds, patchy fog starting to form, such as around the Pribilofs, but light winds. That system drops off to the southeast and uh, just a uh, pretty storm-free condition developing out there over the western, uh, out, actually over the entire Bering Sea, as well as the Aleutians. And for the low temperatures tonight, it looks like mid-20s for the Arctic coast areas uh, to lower 30s here. You get down toward Cape Lisbon and Point Hope with uh, upper 20s to near 30 through the Brooks Range, then mid-30s south of the mountains. And then, of course, the higher elevations here falling a little below freezing. Otherwise, most everywhere staying above freezing and then falling to the low 30s out along the Bering Sea coast. St. Lawrence Island, for example, 29 for the low, mid 30s for the Pribilofs, upper 30s for the Aleutians, mid to upper 30s Alaska Peninsula area, and uh, South Central Alaska, 45 to 50 for the lows, and the Panhandle highs tomorrow may reach in the lower 60s here over the southern southeast coast uh, with, uh, due to the rain shifting to the north here. Uh, and that's where it'll be cooler, obviously, 50 to 55 for the highs there, upper 40s to lower 50s, maybe mid 50s to sit in the valley. Could see some lower 60s breaking out, upper Yukon and eastern interior areas with 50s cooling to the 40s, cooling to the 30s over the Seward Peninsula. And some areas of the Arctic coast, there are bearer forecast to rise above freezing at 34, 38 point lay. And out to the Aleutians, lower to mid 40s. The lows following morning, uh, upper teens to 20s along the Arctic coast. 30s to near 40 here in the central interior, with 30s Copper River Basin, the Sitna Valley, upper 30 south central Alaska, the Aleutians, and the southeast coast, and highs back in near 60 over the interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. 
one weather graphic, first one here for tomorrow morning. IFR along the Arctic coast, marginal VFR in the Brooks Range, and VFR south of the mountains through the central interior here into Canada, south across Copper River Basin, Prince William Sound, and IFR along the coast here from uh, St. Lawrence Island on down to the Kilbrook Gockling Mountain areas. Marginal, more IFR with another system coming into the west. Southeast coast, uh, <clears throat> IFR north, VFR south, IFR central eastern Gulf of Alaska, and then for the afternoon, uh, a little bit of IFR shows up along the eastern North Gulf Coast, maybe over the, uh, with that, the moisture flowing northward, so conditions will deteriorate there for the eastern, uh, across the Wrangells, on up to the eastern Alaska range there. While they improve back to the west, VFR, south central Alaska, northward across the north slope, marginal along the Arctic coast, IFR, St. Lawrence Island, down across the Yukon, Cuscom Delta, Nunavak Island, Bristol Bay, marginal. Same thing for the uh, eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula. A little bit more IFR out west. And then for uh, Monday morning, <clears throat> still IFR out west, kind of shifts to the south a little bit there with uh, marginal over to the Fox Islands. Marginal VFR, Eastern Bering Sea, right up to the coast, and we get some IFR here, uh, Cuscoan Bay, Cape Nuanam, in toward Bethel, and then back along uh, Cape Hermans off there from Macoriuk, on up across and through the Bering Strait, IFR, North Slope, uh, Arctic Coast, IFR now, Prince William Sound, all of the North Gulf Coast here, in across the Northern Panhandle, continuing with VFR down to the south, uh, well, the extreme south, and then IFR here on the eastern slopes of the western Alaska range. VFR in the interior holds through the afternoon on Monday. IFR off the northwest coast, western Arctic coast, marginal though for the north slope and uh, central Arctic coastal areas, but uh, you see over toward Dead Horse to Kaktovik, uh, Barter Island VFR in the afternoon. Marginal VFR in a swath here, mostly along the Alaska range, but into the 40 mile country though, on back down across the yukon Cusquam Delta Bering Sea, IFR, eastern North Gulf Coast, finally losing the IFR over the northern panhandle, but staying marginal with VFR over the southern half. Passes, Anatovic, uh, and Adigan, marginal VFR, trending toward VFR throughout the day, and Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal at times uh, the entire day Sunday with uh, rainy, though, starting out marginal, becoming VFR. Windy, good VFR tomorrow, and Tanee, Isabel, uh, marginal VFR, while Mentasta starts out VFR, and then with that moisture coming northward off the Gulf there, going marginal in the afternoon, especially on the southern entrance. Tanita, VFR. Portage, VFR becoming IFR as moisture rolls in from the east and southeast, and Chilkoot and White, IFR. Freezing levels tomorrow morning, surface here up along and south of the Brooks Range and then here over the southeast interior areas, St. Lawrence Island. Otherwise, uh, 2,000 feet, 4,000 eastern interior, six or two to 10,000 across the Panhandle and two to 4,000 out west. Icing, areas of light to isolated moderate uh, stuff here, rime icing or mixed, south, uh, the west coast, St. Lawrence Island and some rhymeicin, not too significant, pushing into the western Aleutians. Could be some occasional moderate rhymeicin, but about 5,000 feet here from the North Gulf Coast in toward the northern Panhandle. Jet stream, upper level ridging here along and off the Arctic coast uh, with uh, jet stream coming southeastward here across the Bering Sea, across the Aleutians there. Here's that northward tracking low into the Gulf of Alaska, 100 knot jet right up into the southeast coast uh, tomorrow otherwise well south of the area here and for the uh, 9,000 foot winds we've got this low western Norton Sound uh, 10 to 20 knot winds coming around that not too bad and then south picking up to maybe 25 knots lighter over the eastern interior uh, 35 knot winds possible for the western Aleutians and uh, stronger here along the southeast coast in the Gulf 35 to maybe 50 knots same thing at uh, 3,000 feet 35 to 40 but lighter Eastward, very light winds, eastern interior, about 20. With this system out here uh, to the west, not too bad at all. And 15 to 20 coming around that. Light winds under the ridge and then 25 knots with that next storm out west. And turbulence wise, uh, about the only place of any significance will be here along the North Gulf Coast and the Northern Panhandle, uh, especially along the coast there with the occasional moderate chop uh, below about 5,000 feet, especially for small aircraft. And after the break, I'll be back with the marine forecasts.
It used to be that you could only warn one person about a tornado after it had already blown down someone else's barn. Now, on average, we're able to issue a tornado warning 15 minutes before the tornado's even there, and that wouldn't be happening without Doppler radar. This next rad system has reduced fatalities on the order of 45 percent due to tornadoes since its advent. We have a lot more information now about storms and being able to understand how they develop, how they produce severe weather, and how that information might be used to improve warnings for our National Weather Service partners. The lab is unique in that we serve the nation by supporting the National Weather Service and its mission to protect lives and safe property by improving the accuracy and the lead time of severe weather warnings. We have a legacy of radar research and converting existing technology from military to weather purposes. A recycled Doppler radar led to the development of NEXRAD, installed nationwide in the early 90s. It allowed forecasters to see storms like never before. Not only did we help bring that technology to the National Weather Service and to help protect lives and property, but we have continued to upgrade that technology, keep it relevant, and keep it state of the art. Recently, a major upgrade was added. Dual polarization technology takes the radar from 2D to 3D. Forecasters now know more about what type of precipitation is falling, which is very helpful during winter storms, as well as how much rain is accumulating, resulting in better flash flood warnings. The radar can also detect and track tornadoes based on debris. Looking to the future, the National Severe Storms Lab is testing the capabilities of phased array radar. Originally used by the U.S. Navy, the antenna scans the skies electronically rather than mechanically, allowing the radar to focus on a storm. With current technology, we get a full picture or image of what is going on within a storm every four to five minutes. So it's more like a snapshot. Whereas with phased array radar, we get that picture of what's going on in the storm every minute. So it becomes more like watching a movie. So we can do adaptive, rapid scanning on the storms that matter most, being able to provide the information that's most relevant when and where it's happening. Another advantage of phased array radar is its multifunction capability, providing weather and air traffic information simultaneously. Number one, it is a system that promises to replace and expand upon the existing weather surveillance radars. Secondly, to replace aging air traffic surveillance radars. And number three, it offers a potential application to meet Department of Homeland Security and Defense requirements for identifying and tracking non-cooperative aircraft. With the replacement of all these various radars with a single system, the American taxpayer could realize substantial savings in cost you have a lot fewer radars to maintain, and the electronic capability of this also reduces maintenance costs because you do not have moving parts. Not too long ago, the ability to predict severe weather was thought to be impossible. During the past several decades, research conducted at the National Severe Storms Lab has developed life-saving tools like Doppler radar. We've progressed from no warning of threatening weather to about a 15-minute lead time, and current research promises to extend that much further. Our knowledge of severe storms and how they behave, and our use and ability to use the Doppler radar technology and is, is in a lot of cases a direct result of that close working relationship, that research to operations component that we get between the National Severe Storms Laboratory and a forecast office. That history and understanding of how these data can be used by our users and doing the research to help advance the use of radar technology, really it's what we live for, it's in our lifeblood, it's in our history.
It's now easier than ever to be a part of weather research. We just launched the mPing app for both iPhone and Android users, and it's totally free. Ping, which stands for Precipitation Identification Near the Ground, is a research project by the NOAA National Severe Storms Lab and the University of Oklahoma. With the mobile app, you can send us your weather observations on the go. Are snowflakes falling on your head? Is hail hitting your car? Just select what type of precipitation is falling and press submit. It's that easy. It takes about five seconds and it's anonymous. Reports can then be viewed online. Our scientists will compare your report with what the radar has detected. This helps us develop new radar technologies and techniques. Download the app today, share your reports, and let's work together to make our nation weather ready. Learn more here and follow us. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Looking at today's sea ice analysis, uh, not a lot of change from yesterday. Maybe a little bit of new ice here on the edges of this uh, particular ice flow right there, but really uh, not much has changed and uh, not much is expected. Kind of a status quo for the next several days, maybe some gradual melting. On to the coastal water forecast here for the uh, southeast coast. South winds 20 to 25 knots here, small craft advisories on up as those winds increase. Uh, almost gales with uh, 40 knot gale gusts there for the north coast. Lynn Canal southeast 25, southeast 20 Stevens Passage. Lighter winds for Clarence Strait. <clears throat> then we're looking at uh, full gales here for Lynn Canal. South 40 knots on Monday, south 25 gusts, 40 knots there for Stevens Passage. Northwest 20 for Clarence Strait. West winds gradually increase as you head north on the coast here. 15 knots with 13 foot seas there on the south coast. Coming southeast at 30 with 14 foot seas up to the north. Prince William Sound, north winds 20 tomorrow, seas 3 feet. Northeast at 30 here for the eastern north Gulf Coast, north 30 on the west side. Barren Islands, northwest 25. Kamishak Bay, northwest at 15. North 15, southern Cook Inlet and lighter winds north of the Forelands. This will become south at 20 here north of the Forelands on Monday. Otherwise, southern Cook Inlet, southwest 20. Small craft advisories, west winds for both the uh, Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, southwest 25, western North Gulf Coast, only about 20 knots for the eastern zone there, but eight foot seas, and light southwest breeze for Prince William Sound, Kodiak Island, east side, west 20 knots, Shelikoff Strait, southwest at 10, 15 knot winds here for the southern Bar Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula, Bering Sea side, southwest at 15, seas three to five feet. <clears throat> Outlook for Monday, west winds 15 knots for the Alaska Peninsula as well as Bristol Bay with uh, Shelikoff Strait, southwest 25, and uh, small craft advisories there with southwest 20 knot winds with six foot seas in the eastern zones. And then for the uh, western Aleutians tomorrow, uh, 25 to maybe 30 knot winds out of the east with 9 to 11 foot seas out there, much lighter here for Adak and Atka down to 15, still from the east southeast. Seas four to six feet. And then switching direction, you can get in the other side of the ridge axis there. Light uh, variable winds here on to Nikolsky becoming west, 10 to 15, crossed on Alaska Island. And for Monday, northeast winds, pretty light on Alaska Island, 10 knots, three to four foot seas there, with northeast at 15 to 20 knots here from Nikolsky, picking up to 20 to 25 knots. For the uh, central Aleutians, they'll see building to about 8 feet and 25 knot northeast winds to about Amchitka Island, west of there, northeast 20 with 8 foot seas. And for Norton Sound tomorrow, southeast at 15, otherwise St. Lawrence Island north at 15. Uh, pretty light winds out here, eastern Bering Sea, really no big storms in sight for uh, a while. And north, other, so northwest 15 for the Pribilofs and light southwest winds there, south of Nunavak Island. Outlook for Monday, northwest, west-northwest here over the southeast bearing at about 15. We've got some 20 knot winds out of the west from St. Matthew Island becoming northwest north of Nunavak Island. Northwest 15, St. Lawrence Island, really light winds for Norton Sound coming up for Monday. Up along the uh, eastern Beaufort Sea coast, uh, southeast 10 to maybe 15 knots, otherwise light southerlies on the central coast. Back around the light southeast winds, western coast to Cape Thompson, Cape Thompson to the Strait, southeast 15. And for Monday, 
Light north winds here for the uh, Chukchi Sea. Western coast, east at 15. Otherwise, uh, light winds continue for the central coast. And the east side picking up a little bit there, uh, especially in the eastern zone, up to 20 knots, all out of the east. And for tonight, again, uh, rain and showers pretty prevalent here over the Yukon and part of the Cuscombe Delta. Extending down as this trough passes the Pribloff's kind of showery, and then scattered showers Alaska Peninsula. Diminishing showers south central Alaska, lingering mostly along the Alaska Range, dry in the interior. Isolated showers farther to the north, and that snow and precipitation ends on the Arctic coast. This system, uh, again, the 25 to 30 knot winds into the Aleutians there with chance of rain, and rain shifts northwestward here. This system coming up from the south, as you can see, spreads moisture possibly as far east as the Chugach Mountains, maybe East Anchorage, and then across the northern two-thirds of the Panhandle. And then for the next day, this trough out here really washes out. A couple of weak troughs, isolated showers, rain for the eastern Tanana Valley and 40 Mile Country. Thank you for joining us. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.